Okay, welcome back. So last lesson, we finished our high poly in the sense of making it in 3ds Math. This video is the extra step video. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I like to do this because it gives my uh, assets just a bit more character, a bit more life. And whenever I texture it, I have something cooler to pull uh, my low poly from and I'm not just using these pre-canned uh, textures that they are giving us in there and I'm creating my own uh, my own patterns all right so let's dive in and see where we left off all right so we left off here all right this is uh, the current state of our asset let's control Z that so now let's go to the front view and I'm just gonna select everything in this front view right here, I'm just holding down control to continuously select All right now I'm just gonna hit alt and Q so now it's isolated let me unhide it all again because I missed these two bolts and now let's hit alt nope I missed this one as well All right, alt and Q now if I go in my front view I've got this guy I've got all my planks my backboards and uh, that is all I need that's all I need right now so um, as you guys you guys might not know this uh, but to get this into uh, ZBrush you need to convert it to an editable poly you need to take all of this and collapse it um, you don't need to I mean let me reword that um, you want to because you can control how those uh, subdivisions are because you can honestly go inside of ZBrush and subdivide it yourself and do all those extra steps but sometimes I like to come with a pre uh, preset and if I want I can go back inside of uh, uh, ZBrush and then Z remesh it or, or DynaMesh it to give me better topology Right, so the first problem we're gonna run into right here is um, our 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 uh, wireframe. Let me let me re, uh, let me get this right. So our wireframe. Uh, what we want when we're sculpting is we want these to be as squared off as possible, and all um, all of our lines for the most part. See, these guys are getting closer to squares. Right, so we're gonna get some weird banding and stretching whenever we try inside of ZBrush to um, to start painting our information and start painting our detail onto this or sculpting it. Let me not say paint and confuse you. Let me when we start sculpting our detail on here, we're gonna get some weird banding and stretching because our uh, polygons are rectangular in shape, and we want these to be as close to squares as possible because it's going to even out how that geometry is acting on the mesh. All right. So with that all said and done, I'm just going to select all of this. I'm going to file save as high poly create. I'm going to save it as underscore zbrush just so that I can um I can go back if I want and I have my high poly crate file and that's not messed up and you guys should constantly be saving and, and, and uh, making sure that you have iterations that you can go back to uh, because man if you lose all your work and you know it's 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 a sad day for you I'm sorry man it's a sad but you're gonna have to start it over so I'm gonna select all of it right click and then I'm gonna convert it to an editable poly now that I've converted it to an editable poly they are good to go inside of uh, ZBrush as you can see now that I click on any of these objects uh, they are now uh, subdivided right that that turbo smooth has been collapsed into them all right and that's perfectly fine that's exactly uh, what I want to happen so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything file I'm gonna export selected right now that I'm gonna export it but before I do that let me let's let's name everything let's name everything so that whenever it brings it into ZBrush we've got a decent naming convention uh, going so I'm gonna select this this these wood pieces and I'm gonna go to my tools and I'm gonna go to uh, let's see there's a rename objects right I'm gonna say the base name again do we rename these already oh never mind we already renamed these all right never mind 
I've already renamed these, so you guys don't have to do that. If you haven't renamed them, I would go ahead and do so. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to control I. So I select the inverse and I'm going to use tools and I'm going to actually rename these my nails so that I know what my nails are versus the wood pieces. All right. So let's do. Let's do rename objects again. Oh, I think I just closed it because I think it's already open. All right, there it is. So now I'm going to do base name wooden and then underscore. Uh, let's see, let's do prefix. Let's do crate underscore wooden and then the suffix we're going to put nails and then underscore so that everything, all the numbers won't be butting right against that S and it'll uh, separate them. So I'm just going to rename them. And now if I go into it, so I should have create wood nails and then the underscore and then the 01. So that's my naming convention for the wood and the nails. So now I'm just going to select all this file export selected and I'm going to export that. So I should have, uh, let's see if I don't see if I can find my crate folder. So here's my crate and here's my export folder. I'm going to name it wood in underscore crate underscore HP. No, I'm just going to call it wooden crate because the high poly, this isn't the finished high poly. So wooden crate. Okay. Okay. Let's go. All right. So now our wooden crate has been exported. Now we can open up our Z brush and we can just hit the import. And then we're going to navigate to where our file is, which is crate export and then wooden crate. So let's open that bad boy up and then it's going to ask us a few questions, right? It's going to say, do you want to import cameras? I'm going to say, nope, I do not want to import any of the cameras. There are no cameras in the scene, so there's not nothing to export or to import. All right. So um, let's see, I can import the materials as their own poly groups, or I can import the SS uh, sets, the subsurface sets as poly groups and or the selection sets as poly groups. So everything that you have selected um, is going to be its own poly group, or I can import the materials as their own subgroups, subtools, right? So these are your subtools right over here, and they'll populate there. So if I did this one, it would give me two subtools, which would be the wood based on the materials and then the nails, which have their own uh, materials. All right. So what I want to do is import the selection sets as polygroups. Okay. Now I can just draw this bad boy out, let it go, right? I've let it go. And I want to click edit before I do anything else, click edit. Now, I should be able to rotate around it. And if you look over here to the right, this tells us what our orientation is in. All right, so I'm looking at it from the front. If I go into my wireframe right here, you can see the wireframes. All right, so here are my pieces here, and um, those are the nails and stuff right there at the top. All right. So if I want, I can merge all my nails together or, you know, I can still do that operation if I want, but let's see, for, let, let's, let's change this color. I don't like this weird wax matte cap that they always give you. So I usually use the either basic materials or basic material uh, two to get me, get me started. All right. So here's the next thing. So to detail wood, right? Um, it's one of those things that, I mean, you can find a lot of packs anywhere, but I actually have made my own uh, set of wood carving and wood uh, making materials that are free of charge for all of you guys. If you guys want to go grab it, it will be on uh, cgbagpack.com. 
uh, or gumroad.com forward slash CG backpack. And you can you can just go on there and then you can just download uh, you can download this this asset pack right here and this asset pack just comes with all of these alphas wood knots wood grain uh, the waves in the wood the curves right it comes with all this stuff that is going to help you uh, master this wood making process it's called wood master one definitely go grab it if you're going to do this and that's what i'm going to use to kind of start carving this bad boy up all right so let's look at our let's look if i hit alt on any of these objects it lets me select it and i know what i have selected based on what's highlighted all right so now what i want to do is i want to look at my wireframe right look at my wireframe all right so uh let's let me show you what i'm talking about let's let's go into our alphas right here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to import all of this these wood alphas all right and i have them somewhere that i've already downloaded so let's go into all my alphas so here are my wood alphas and here's what you guys should have all right should at least 30 of them in here that you guys can use so i'm just going to select all of them and then just hit open and it's going to bring them all in all in and i've got all my wood knots all my wood stuffs in here and i can start using that uh to kind of detail uh, our model here, our, our, our wooden crate, and that's going to be uh, what we're going to do next. All right. So let's start off. I'm going to turn this poly frame off and see if we're going to run into any issues. So let's go into geometry and we're going to divide it. And what this is, is essentially turbo smooth. It's turbo smooth inside of ZBrush. And like I said before in that lecture, well, they all, every program is going to name it differently. They all do similar functions, the same thing, but they'll name it different. What you'll find is that a lot of these companies just make up these words. Turbo smooth is not a word that existed in our dictionary, right? Subdivisions and something. That's not, that's not, we make all, you know, like ZBrush is known for making up a ton of words. Like if you even look at their, like their Z plugins, right? Um, let's look at what's, transpose master and uv master and and decimation master and like they make up all this stuff and you know this is their terminology so they might mean you know they might all mean the same thing but they're just worded a little differently so you got to be careful and and know what this stuff is named all right so let's turn off this poly frame and i'm going to zoom in right now i've got my standard brush selected and I've got these dots selected. What I really want is I want to I want to use this drag select because I want to drag um, my tool on. And if you can see, look at that, it's really really crunchy. That's because I don't have enough subdivisions in here. So I'm going to divide this like, till like it's divided by four. And then now when I pull this on, you can see I get all this cool detail in here. And it's right now it's really strong, so I can just turn down the intensity, right? And then. Let's turn it to like 14, right? So if I wanted to start making, you know, wood, I can just, I'm just gonna start going into my my panel here and I'm gonna find uh, some, some cool ones. So there's some, all right, so let's see what this one does. All right, so this one's got too many cracks for me. So I want something that's a little, a little cleaner. Uh, it's gonna give me, uh, some of the action that I'm looking for. Let's see. So I've got a bunch of wood knots, and yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of really cool uh, wood carving materials in here. All right. So when I hit Alt, what it does is it uh, inverts this so I can do this to either Z add or Z sub so I can add it or I can subtract it if I subtract it that's what happens if I add it right this is what I get so I want to be careful to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it so now let's just, let's just drag still trying to find the right the right right one let's see what this one looks like Ooh, this one gives I like this one because it gives you these really cool like splintered or like shattered it's not for this wood but it's a really cool uh, very cool cool kind of kind of shape All right, I kind of like this one 
So this is wood grunge uh, five, and that was set to the opposite way. So let's let's reduce the Z intensity, All right? Use that for bottom part. Let's bring this guy and see what we get. All right. Those are chunks. Let's do something a little, a little less. So right now it's on Z add. Let's turn this to Z sub. All right, I'm just trying to get some noisy information in here. Some wood noise, All right? I want to make sure that it's aligned. If I hold down Shift, it snaps it. That's all I'm doing. It's just Snapping it in place. Increase this a little bit. Alright, so I'm getting my wood pretty, pretty nice. Let's get some of this, whatever this blurry thing is. It's gonna give us a little warping in our wood. It's, I like, I kind of like that. Alright, so the next thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do some of these wood knots because these wood knots give us uh, some pretty cool little top, top side stuff. So I can get some stuff like this. All right, so very wood-like, uh, wood-like things going on there. All right, these are like wood knots or whatever. So we're getting wood knots in there. So I, and I have individual wood knots too that I can use. Uh, so let's find an individual one, and we I use these for like the nails where the nails are. All right, so like I kind of like to sometimes like recess it in there and. Just to give it like a cool, just to give it more more variation, right? So don't be afraid to experiment with this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't be afraid to experiment. It's all good. Let's do this top part. All right, so now we don't have enough geometry in here. Okay, that's enough. Ooh, I kind of like this one. A little bit better. Let's reduce the intensity a little bit. Right, so this is actually acting like a displacement where it's pushing, it's actually pushing and pulling that geometry. Right, and just like that, like it's just a few clicks and I'm 
creating all this detail. Right, and I can do the same thing where I can isolate these guys. Hide these guys with the eye. So now I can really start to see what I'm doing and see what's going on. All right. So this is pretty much the process for the whole entire thing. Just doing this over and over, getting, you know. And once you start to get these guys and understand and make your own and you guys are gonna just, you know, be so good at this that it's not even, it's not gonna be fair. You guys are, you know, has got so much technology at your fingertips now. All right. So we got some cool wood shapes. So let's go back to some of this stuff. Let's see what this guy does. Ooh, I kind of like this guy. Kind of like this guy. All right, so you can really decide. You can decide what kind of look you want for your wood and everything. This is like this is designer wood, guys. This is designer wood. All right, so now let's unhide this part right here and then let's just start doing the same thing. All right, so I've got these individual planks that I want to, uh, I want to detail. So let's, let's just do just that. So there's not enough there's not enough smoothing on this. So let's add some 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 divisions to this. And then uh let's just uh that's way too much. Alright, I'm gonna hide everything else so I'm just focused on um so I'm just focused on this guy right here. Right. So now I can just worry about this guy. Yeah, so uh, let's see. It's way too big. Let's bring that in. All right, and it's starting to get a little repetitive, so I'll, I'll usually just go in and break it up with like some of these these wood crack ones. All right, just break it up. Breaking it up. We got this right here. All right, and we can even use symmetry. All right, if I hit X on my keyboard, I can bring in the symmetry option, but I find that it makes it so. Um, so symmetrical that it's hard it's easy to tell that you're you're placing patterns on stuff so I try I try my best to lay off the symmetry so I'm just gonna turn that off by pressing X I just wanted to show you guys that you can sculpt symmetrically or you can sculpt right and left at the same time you can even sculpt up down left right at the same time you can sculpt in circles if you want All right let me show you what I mean by that so 
Uh, let's go to our transforms. It is what it is. And then activate our symmetry. And then we can X activate X, Y, and Z, right? And then we can Let me increase the intensity so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So that's that's something you can do, and you know. But for something like this, I mean, you don't want it to look too repetitive, you know, because then you'll be able to tell that this person just placed this here, here, and here all at once. So I try to, you know, at the very least, it's already simple enough. Let's let's give it a little character. Let's give it a little life, right? Let's not. Let's not be generic in our uh, in our pursuit for great art. So I'm just gonna turn off my active symmetry and then just you know do my thing, do my thing, one little one little guy at a time. There we go. That's, That's wood damage, wood cracks. It's a little deep. Right? Yesterday we talked about how color values work and how uh, black means it's recessed and white means it's pulling forward. Well, it's the same thing inside of a ZBrush whenever you're using your, your alphas. So keep that in mind whenever you're making your stuff. This guy's not working too well for me. Let's see what happens if I do this. Massive nonsense. That's what happens when I do that. All right, um, I think I'll, let's try this guy. Just wanna go back. And these little guys are your undos, right? This is as far back as you can go and each single object has its own history, all right? So, remember that when you're making this stuff. All right, so I'm just, and it's okay if it overlaps a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll, you know, maybe just turn it, you know, the other way, just so I'm not repeating and so I might just do something like this. Nope. Let's make sure our planks are straight. All right, I'll do these. All right, I want to keep them at relatively the same size. Relatively the same size. And then let's just, I'm just gonna go all the way down this bad boy. Just try to try to knock this, this knock this guy out. really like what it's doing to the edges. It's giving it some very interesting shapes. And this is what a lot of people do, you know, this is the process before Substance made, Substance Painter made it. Just a little bit easier to do some texturing stuff. People would, you know, spend their time detailing in here so that all the information that they were packing into their high poly would translate into their low poly. And this is still, still, uh, for the most part, how it's done, right? For the most part, when you're making characters and stuff like that, you're gonna want to put as much detail in the high poly, and then you know, uh, do the rest inside of the texture. And you know, you try to get as much as you can out of that high poly, and then you try to squeeze the rest out of the uh, 
out of the low poly and the texturing process. So it's kind of like a juggling, like you're juggling between um, you know different aspects and it's up to you to know where you want to start if your strength is substance painter then you might not want to bring it inside of a you might not want to bring it inside of a ZBrush to to do your detail if you know you're way more proficient at detailing inside of a, like substance painter substance designer or something like that or Mari whatever painting or texture software you use I don't care as long as it looks good, that's all that matters, right? In this in this industry, all that matters is results. Result is all anybody cares about, right? I don't care how you get there, just get there. I don't care if you gotta fly, walk, swim, crawl, Uber, whatever you gotta do to get there, get there, right? That's the name of the game. That's how you get paid. That's how, you know, nobody's, nobody's gonna be like, wow, that's an amazing piece. You know, uh, I'm not going to pay you unless you tell me how you made it. No, they're just going to be like, all right, it's done. Cool. Thank you. Here's your check. Bye. Uh, I'll see you when the next one's ready. You know, so uh, it's 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 about finding your own process. It's about finding your own your own way, how everything works for you, what, what makes you more comfortable. Right. Like you got to figure that out, figure that out. And once you do, you'll become a much better artist. You'll understand what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, uh, and and you'll be much better artist for it. You know, just figure out what your pipeline is, what how you get to that final step, and nobody's gonna care how you do it. You just gotta figure that out, and that's what this class is about: figuring out what your process is, right, while teaching you the fundamentals of what we do and how we do it. All right. Right in the future, I mean, you guys are gonna have some crazy stuff. I don't even know what what the the, the tech that's gonna exist by the time you guys are are the ones uh, you know really really getting this stuff pushed forward. You know, so you know you guys are at a beautiful point in this because you get to witness all of this this new cool technology. Right, it used to be so much harder uh, to do what I'm doing now, but now this is just. I made these alphas inside a substance designer and you know I can just go and start using them to detail inside of ZBrush and it's a it's beautiful in the pipeline and the the processes are getting a lot easier so I don't want you guys to get bogged down in how uh, programs work I want you guys to think about the artistry right think about the things that make the uh, the piece look better right because the, the technology part is going to soon be you know we're trying to get that out of the way for artists as much as possible and the sooner we can do that you know the the better we all will be you know so um, just taking some of those uh, those wood knots and just throwing them on the end to give myself some some cool shapes and things like that and you know so as you guys can see you know we've kind of been able to 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 really work up this shape in like 30 minutes or so work up this uh, this woodworking and then I'm gonna unhide uh, the rest of it and we'll then we'll finish it up and and maybe throw some some interesting warps or just dent up the nails a little bit to give it a little more interest you know um, just give it a little bit more interest and right, now I'm just like just like psh, just throwing these bad boys on I don't even care I'm just like boom 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 Let's go. Let's do this, right? And uh, I want you guys to get there, all right? So this is just a wooden crate, you know. Like it's just, it's not, it's nothing special. It's a wooden crate, but uh, you know, it's it's one of our, it's it's one of our, one of our better pieces. So I don't know how I feel about this stuff up top. Let's, let's go back. All right. Let's keep going back. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, I'm starting to like some of this information that I'm getting all through uh, the inside of this crate. I'm starting to really dig that. Let's go to this guy. No, nope, let's go back to where we were. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find that one that I was using and then use that on this guy because I did not like the results that I was getting from those other ones. So let's use this guy again. Right, and it's not affecting my nails, which is good. So, 
and this one already had like a little base and I didn't erase it but I I added on top of it because it you know it gives a little more character you know this this wood looks like it's it's been beat up and torn and you know um, this is for me this is me adding more character to that 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 generic kind of wood crate you know so um, you guys are more than welcome to take your time and, and, and really go in and detail this however you want this is me going through it you know relatively quickly and if this was like for a client or something I'd obviously take way more time and way more effort and you know but I'm just showing you guys how all of this stuff works right and you can even download your own you know alphas and different things like that and you know just figure out your pipeline you know that's, that's the beauty of this stuff All right. All right, we've got some interesting looking wood now All right, it's beat up a little bit and um, I'm, I'm starting to dig it I'm starting to dig it a lot all right so um let's see another thing about wood is let's see this let's get to this side because i don't think we detail this side yet so let's let's do that let's detail this little side piece Okay. It's a good looking piece of wood. Okay, I've also got the inside of them too, so I need to go back and do those. So let's just hide these guys. And right now I'm in orthographic mode, but if I want to go into my perspective mode, I can hit P or I can just click this guy right over here. So now I'm back in perspective. Right, making sure it's in a it's a line and I'm not just throwing it anyhow, right? You know, gotta be be uh, gotta be deliberate in your actions. Right. Thing is it's gonna start off ugly, 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 and it's gonna take a while and you know, it's just building layer on top of layer on top of layer on top of layer. <laughs> until you finally get something that resembles what you're trying to do. And that's how everything is, you know? Everything has to go through an ugly phase. It's okay. It's part of the process, all right? Sometimes the ideas aren't clear until closer to the end of the project than the beginning of it. It's part of it, all right? So now we've detailed this wood and it looks good. So now let's, let's that's with some of these nails. All right, and for the nails, I'm not going to put a wood texture on them. So I'm just going to turn this off and I'm going to turn uh, this to freehand instead of dots. And instead of using the, uh, the clay tubes or the, uh, the 
this uh, brush, the standard brush, I'm going to use uh, this clay buildup uh, brush uh, to detail those those pieces. And what I'm going to do is, um, let's see, let's see what basic material looks like. All right, basic material looks a little bit better. All right, this is what I want. All right. Okay, I just noticed that we didn't detail this inside and this part right here. So we'll do that. Let me do that right quick. Let's hold this before we go back and jump into those nails. So let's turn this. Off. Those have them. Those just just these guys that don't have them. So now let's go back. And I don't like going through, this is like I, I always tell you guys, there's a granny way to do things and there's the cool guy way to do things. So I can click through all that stuff or I can click B on my keyboard to bring up my brush list, right? And if I wanna go to my standard, I can just be B, S, and then T. That's gonna take me back to my standard tool and then I can just change this to back to drag select and then find the, uh, the, the, the detailing alpha that I want to use and then just use that to kind of finish this little, this little pieces out. All right, and on yours, take your time. Don't just rush through it like mine is. Don't rush through it. Take your time, get something that looks really good. All right. A little extra on that bad boy right there. And then let's give this guy a little bit more action, a little bit more love. Let's show this guy some love. You know, everybody needs a little love sometimes. It's okay. We're human. All right, so now let's just detail these sides right here. All right, just like that. And then these little edges and stuff, I don't really care. I care, but I don't because, you know, I'm trying to move through this a little bit. So I'm just, all right, just one little piece at a time. And you guys can see my, uh, my keyboard, so you guys know exactly what I'm doing. There should be no questions about how to do any of this stuff. It's, it's I mean, it's pretty straightforward. All right, it looks like somebody cut it right there, right? That looks so cool. All right, even a wooden asset could be made to look quite cool. All right, let's wait for it to autosave, and then I'm just gonna turn this bad boy on. And just like that, we've got ourselves a nice looking uh, crate. And the only reason we're only doing this is because I do not want to do that entire process for every single side. That would be insane. So I'm just going to make all of this and then just rebuild it inside of um, 3ds Max. All right. So it looks like in here we might be missing some of these nails. So let's just let's just go through. So this guy right here. So now let's hit B. C, right? I want my clay buildup tool. Okay, so it's B, it's gonna be C, B, B, C, B. All right, B, C, B for my clay buildup. And now I can just zoom into this bad boy right here. Zoom in. Ooh, it does not have enough subdivision. 
All right, so my biggest issue right now is that I've got all of these guys. And um, they're like independent of each other. And I do not want that at all because then I'm going to have to individually go and throw No. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select this first guy. I'm just going to merge it down. So let's just merge. We're going to drop this guy out. We're going to do merge down. Okay. Merge down. Ooh, okay. All right. Merge down. Merge down. Merge down. Merge down. Right. I'm just merging these to make sure that I'm still. I just want to. I want to just merge all of my nails together so that I'm not. Um, you know, having to search around for them now. I've merged all of them now. All of my nails are now in place. So I've got two here that are hidden, and I've got two here uh, that are hidden. That I'm just gonna I'm gonna pull pop these guys right back out. That's fine. That's that's okay. So I can just let me hide these guys right here. Okay, so these guys have like missing back faces, so we're just not going to use them. We're going to um, make these nails into the ones we're going to use. All right. So now let's add a divide to it. Let's do a geometry and then divide. Let's divide this. Okay, it's nice and divided. All right, so if I hold down shift and click, it just smooths it out. So let's turn off these poly groups so you guys can see what's going on. So I'm just kind of smoothing them out a little bit and I'm just gonna add a little bit and that's too much. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's not use bi clay buildup. It's giving me this square. That's not bad. That's not bad. I just want to turn it down. Let's just turn it down. All right. So let's go back one again. And then I can just turn this bad boy down to like two. All right, and I'm just gonna beat it up. Just wanna beat it up a little bit, all right? All right, so I'm just gonna beat up these nails a little bit, right? This is the, this is like the, the adding character and you know, like that's what we're doing here. We're taking all of our models There we go. So we're taking all of our models and then we're just adding some life to it, right? We're just, just even to the nails, right? Everything deserves a little bit of love, a little bit of love. Don't, don't be a hater. Don't be a hater. Just love, love on your little models a little bit. Love them. Right? These are your, these are your products. And the thing is, little things like this show in the final result. You'll see how much better you can get final results from stuff that's already in there right it's going to look so much more realistic it's going to give you so much more bang for your buck right you know you've got something that's nice it's got nice fidelity it's got a nice high poly to to call from and you know you're you've got a lot of good stuff going and, and it'll sell in your low poly a lot better than uh trying to just use textures sometimes right sometimes for speed Right, it's just easier to just use textures for what you're doing and and just kind of move along. But you know, there's sometimes if you know if you're making something that's personal, or, you know, you want to just give it that little little extra bit of love in and right. And I'm not doing anything. I'm just going through and just kind of smashing on these things with alt. You know, just it's a nail. Right? I don't expect it to. There's no specific shape or pattern I'm looking for. I'm just looking to. To damage them up because the idea is that you know somebody's hammering these nobody's like placing each single nail onto the thing right that's 
that's not that's not how it works you know you're smashing these things with hammers constantly one might get loose you know you might have to smash it again back in that bad boy so you're you're, you're gonna get these these interesting interesting shapes right it'll you know you get some interesting interesting shapes when it comes to nails all right so we've got our nails in we've got our uh, our wood in you know and i think i mean we're we're, we're pretty good we're pretty good we've got some good detail in here we've got some um, some really good looking stuff and the next step for this would be to bring it back inside of 3ds max and then put everything back together for our final um, for our final presentation all right and that's exactly what we're going to do next <laughs> 